tonight's episode is Animation Fails. Well, I've been really excited about doing this video for some reason. I do lots of special research just for you! Yay! Anyways, um, Animation Fails. They're what give us Animu. Yes, Animu! I can't get this out of the paper! Hang on. Um... Anime is not really done with traditional animation cells anymore. So, they're kind of a thing of the past. But they're still pretty cool when you think about it. If you ever get the chance to go to a um, animation studio or an exhibit uh, talking about animation cells and the whole process, I say go. If you like Disney, you like anime, you like film in general, I please go. Go look at it. It's really cool. You learn a lot of cool things about film in general and the whole process of making animation in general. Either as the old flipbook style or the animation cell process or what we have now, more digital stuff. I have a small collection of animation cells, and I've got to the point where I really don't know what to do with them. I don't know how I don't know how to store them. I don't know how to clean them. If anything happens, I'm kind of a noob, but I love collecting them anyway. So I've done a couple of things of research on what to do if something happens to them, but also what are animation cells. An animation cell is short for animation celluloids. And the process was patented in 1914 by on, Eric Hold. Look at my pretty notebook for a moment. I can't remember everything. Ah! Earl Hurd, sorry. Eric Hurd sounded right, but 1914. Earl Heard patented the process of doing an animation cell. An animation cell is comprised of several layers. You've got a layer of plastic known as a celluloid where the image is painted on and then you have several layers. You have one background and several different cells or pictures to do a sequence and you just take the cells and you lay them over the background over and over and over again until you get a sequence or a film and that's how things have been done since well the 90s uh, Disney's last animation cell produced film was The Little Mermaid in the 90s um, the process has changed a lot since 1914 um, in 1942 animation cells, the plastic that it was produced on was changed. You won't, not many people have cells made of the nitrate, which is where you have to be really careful with. Usually you have stuff like this, which is a thin, very flexible plastic, and it's painted. And on the back you can see the layers of paint. This particular cell is from Oh Goddess. It's one of the little biker dudes and I love him. He makes me very happy. This is one of my favorite images of him. Um, I don't have any of the sketches that go with this or the background. Most animation cells that you buy or production animation cells you buy will not come with a background because there was only one background usually made per sequence. So if you have a background, you're pretty lucky and you're not really going to pay a lot for it. I have a couple of back, I have a background, so I'll show you what that looks like with several layers. But if you can see this on the front, you have your black lines, the outlines here. They're what paint, uh, what is painted first. Up until the 60s, animation cells, including the lines, were painted. After the 60s, the Xerox machine was made, and people would take the Ganga or the Doga and Xerox it onto the plastic and then paint in layers from there on. As you can tell by the layers, you start with your simple, your most complex layer first and then go to your simple. 
and what it looks like a big blob grays out looking like. That's it. They're very flexible to keep the paint from flaking off of the cell. So you have your holes, which allows it to be clipped onto the, the board, the image board. And you also have these numbers. It's really hard to see. B13. That means that it was sequenced. It was shot 13 of the sequence. And the B, A, B, C, D, E, F, G are paper sizes. Um, usually you'll see cells that A and B. Sometimes you see a C. If you have really large cells, I'll show you one of those. It's an oversized cell. But let me show you the sketches that come with a cell. Now, I'm sure you've heard this or seen this, Ganga and Doga. What are Ganga and Doga? Ganga are produced by the key animators in a animation studio. They're really big. Most of them are not included in the cell of the cell. Cell, 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 cell. But you will get Doga. These are Doga. Just pencil sketches. This one's from Key the Metal Idol, and this is Key. If you've never seen that animation, please watch it. It's very good, short, underrated older animation. I love it. Um, this is a doga. Dogas are done by the little underling animators in the studio to help do the animation. This is another part. It was layered and this is how it's supposed to go. You got your your main of the character and then you have the pole or it's more like it's a door. It's not a pole but it looks like a pole. And this is what the actual animation looks like. Now this is a two-part cell and to achieve certain looks you have to layer. This one's really dark and all you can see is like the reflection. But it's Key's face. It's got all the layers of paint. This one's not stuck. This is actually just a protection. There's nothing on this one which I was really impressed with. Most of them don't come with this. It's got a bottom and a top protection layer. I'm not really going to remove the bottom part because animation cells, the paint is made to stick to the plastic. So when you get one, you have to be really careful. It will stick, the paint will peel, and you see some of the layers on there. Like I said, this one is really dark. It's, it's probably the darkest cell that I own. But you can see where the door, the pole looking thing was, and you have her. When you have... A doga, they usually line up, be a little off, but you can see where it kind of overlaps. And they use this as a base to do their painting. They'll take this, Xerox it onto the plastic, and then paint from there, and then they'll use this as reference. The Ganga are, are done by the key animators and given to the um, other animators to base the sequence off of because their ganga will go with the key animation cell in that sequence so they can't really use and abuse it like they can this one for instance. Now this one you can see there's the sequence number. It is a B3 and you have some Japanese, I don't know what it says but there's that one. Those are my two newest animation cells and I have a good size box back here. I'm going to show you a timing chart. Timing, timing charts are fun. Sadly, if you can't read Japanese, it's not going to tell you much. It honestly doesn't have much information on it, but it's still kind of cool to look at because you don't realize that they use so much in making an animation. A timing sheet is used to show you where a particular cell goes in a sequence in a show. And they're usually yellow. All the ones I've seen have been yellow. And they're really long. And they have um, all the graphs. They have certain little slots. You can see right here, it shows A, B, C, D, E, F. Yes, this particular cell sequence was A, and it runs all the way down to here. That's really 
you about all I can tell you about a timing sheet. Since I can't read Japanese, I can't tell you the particular notes on this timing chart. But that's basically what it's used for. I think it's kind of cool to have them. It's not necessary to have. But let me show you what a background looks like. This is one of my few Sailor Moon animation cells. It's complete. Seiya and stars. Playing football. Not, not the coolest cell in the world, but still. This one has stuck a little bit, as you can see. Where the background has stuck to it. Now when you have a cell like this and you lift it, you have to be very careful when you see the outline of Seiya on the background. That is all a background is. It You can put any background with any cell and it's not going to really matter. Now if you're doing a show with it, yes, but for your personal collection, it doesn't really matter. And here is the, the Doga for the Sailor Stars. You got your secrets number. My cell secrets number matches, so this Doga goes with this cell. Because it has A4 and then A4. Backgrounds are kind of messy. I want to say this one was probably done in chalk pastels because you got it going through on the back. And then how it's taped up here. A lot of cells are stuck together after the production of the animation so like I said you have to be really careful you can take them apart but you have to go very slow and peel very very slowly Let me show you I have another one where the background layering on cells is used for different reasons you'll have several layers of the plastic like this this one doesn't have many layers, but you'll have cells that have different layers of plastic, and this is used to show speech or to show expressions. Usually each each sheet will show the little details of the face, like the eyebrows, the eyes, the mouth, you know, anything that would move in that range of speech. And as they're going through the secret, so to stick the pieces of that on top of the base cell of the character's face, like this. got another Sailor Moon cell that's a, a monster of the day, but this one has several parts to it and it has lots of stamps and writing on what to do during the animation. You can tell it's a monster of the day and it's the part in the show where it gets defeated, vanquished by Sailor Moon. You know, the whole, ah! that thing. And on the Ganga, as you can see right here, it says high contrast. It means that the, the flash of light is going to come in. It's going to be high contrast. All the colors. You can see here the several different notes on the coloration and the, how the face is going to move as you're in the animation. Monster of the Day cells are really cool because there are so many different monsters of the day. There's hundreds. There's like one pretty much for every episode. So there's almost 200 monsters of the day for Sailor Moon. So I think it's pretty cool to have these. There's not many of them. A cool one about this is to keep it from getting damaged they put a protective layering on the back. This one has some line fading because the fun fact about the black outline paint, the paint they use is not very resistant to UV ray light. So in older animation cells, especially from the 90s, you're going to see line fading. This one's not too bad, but if you zoom in pretty close around the hands, you can see it right, right, like right here around the glove. It's not too bad on this one, so I wouldn't worry about it. Um, another cool thing about this animation cell is there's a thing called key animation cells. And the way you tell those apart from other animation cells and the production is that on their sequence number at the top of the Doga and the cell, you will see this. It'll say end. This 
particular Monster of the Day cell is a key animation cell. What I can't tell you is if, if this is actually a Ganga or a Doga. I think it's a Ganga because of the fact that it does say in and it has all these notes on it for the coloration, the lighting, the way the sequence is supposed to be ran. So I think this one is a key animation cell. It's one of my favorites of the of my collection. Let's see. Show you another one with a background. This one uh, I get really nervous about moving it around because it is my favorite of all my production animation cells. It's Queen Nalina from Sailor Moon. It's very awesome to get such a beautiful complete cell of the villain, our main character. To me, it's pretty awesome. Now, the thing about this one is the background on it is a lot more detailed than my Seiya background. It's not... This cell doesn't have many parts. It's very straight to the point. Let's see if this one's a... This one is not a key cell. Believe it or not, you just have here, it's an A5, it's a lot of detail to this doga. There's no notes on it, it's just, the only notes is the X's, I don't know what that denotes, I don't know if that's just highlighting background, what, I've noticed that the backgrounds are usually made of a, like an art paper, there's a name for it, I know. This this one's stuck, so I can't really lift it to show you what the background looks like. Because you can see it started there. It's pretty stuck on there. But as you can see, this background is extended. You got the here, and you can tell the age on it because the tape has started to yellow. What else can I tell you about animation cells? I guess how to store them. Storing animation cells, or when you start collecting animation cells, the idea of storing them gets a little scary because you're like, oh my god, what do I do? How do I, what, I want to display these, what, what do I do? Basically, you can, you can frame these. You can put them in a binder so if you can look through them at any time or, you know, whatever. But just don't put a lot of weight on them. Because if you put a lot of weight or multiple cells stacked on top of each other, you run the risk of damaging the paint on the, the celluloid. Um, so it, it's the general rule of thumb to not put, I guess, I wouldn't put more than 10 I think that's what I read was 10. It makes me kind of nervous to have as many as I do in one spot, honestly. But I don't, I haven't been able to find any like clear files to put my cells into to keep them from getting damaged. Because I have so many now and not all of them came with little protective sleeves or anything like that. So I'm just kind of like winging it with how I, with how I take care of them. Um, you can frame them and mat them and everything. The only thing is, is you you will need to take them out of the frame and the mat every now and then, and let them air. If especially if they're the nitrate ones, which you're not going to really have those unless you have an animation cell that's from the 90s or not the 90s, the 40s. Anything in between, like I, before 1942, you run into the whole celluloid nitrate plastic. And those have to be taken care of very specifically. They have to be kept in a very controlled climate. They're, the plastic gets brittle and it breaks down. So you pretty much, you either have to have the money to shell it to have it restored and cleaned properly. Or you have to work in an environment where you can do that. Other than that, I don't suggest buying a cell older 
been, actually I wouldn't buy a cell older than 1960, just for, just to be safe, because 1960 is when the Xerox machine came in. Now, another process of cells came in in 1985, called the um, animation photo transfer process. Now, that works kind of like silk screen printing. It was just basically a faster way of producing the cells. They're still hand painted and everything, like, you know, Sailor Moon, their clamp, card clapper, socket, all that are still hand painted, but it just went a little faster. The Xerox machine sped up things a lot, but the whole silk screen process that they tried really did help. Now, the first example of this was uh, Disney's The Black Cauldron, according to Wikipedia. So, don't, if I'm, I'm wrong on that, please. Please, please correct me. Um, I guess the only thing else I have to add is that if you're seeing, if you really love a show and you want to own a piece of it, and you're willing to sell all the money and get a little binder and you know everything to take care of it, I would get an animation cell. Sometimes you can get lucky and get a really good cell for cheap because you will have similar cells look almost identical in the same sequence. So you can get a cell that looks just like your favorite scene from an anime, but it's not just the right one, so you can get it for cheaper. So keep that in mind. eBay's a wonderful place. Um, Japanese auctions are wonderful too. I don't want to give too many of my sources away because I, I've gotten a lot of animation cells for cheap that I really enjoy. But I would love to see more people collect them and talk about their animation cell collection. I guess before I let you guys go, I'm going to show you a pan cell. There's also a thing called a bank cell. I didn't think to mention it before because I don't have a bank cell yet. I'm going to get one. Bank cells are going to cost you a lot of money because a bank cell is used over and over and over again in the main like sequence like think the Sailor transformations they have a bank cell for pretty much every transformation like Super Sailor Moon um, Sailor Mercury, Super Sailor Mercury, Uranus, Neptune you know all of them they all have a bank cell so to get a bank cell you're gonna spend a good chunk of change. So this is a pan cell. Pan cells are massive. They're like almost twice the size of a normal cell. This one's from the Oh Goddess movie and it's Mr. Hot in its pants, the villain over here. There's your sequence number, 343. I don't have a background for this guy. This one has some line fading. It's not terrible. I would try to show you that, but it's not going to show up. Because it's like around in here. And it's hair. You can kind of see it. Like if you're looking from this side of the paint, you can see through. And same thing when you look at it from the fa his face. His mouth. The, the, right here. The lines in his mouth has line fading. Some parts in his hair. Yeah, specifically in his hair and the outline around his face where they did like the pen has it. But yeah, you're not going to be able to see that. But that's a pan cell. It's very big. Used on an oversized paper. This is just a piece of paper they included. It's not a Doga or a Ganga, but you can see where some of the paint has kind of transferred around. This is just kind of kept in here to protect the cell. But there's more to this. There'll be more of these. And this was just kind of put over backgrounds and things were put over it to create the, you know, the scene. I know I have another. I have another pan. Here it is. So this is another pan cell. Instead of being wide this way, it's wide. It's big this way. I want to say this is from um, the closing sequence with T and A4. You got your, your doga. Isn't it pretty? It's got some paint transfer on the, the back right here on her hair. The brown seems to transfer a lot 
This is probably one of my favorites that came in. It's got some really clean lines. Very little line fading. Very little paint damage to the back. Because the, the paper likes to stick to the paint. And it's a pain in the butt. And it's really scary because you're like, oh my gosh, I've ruined my cell. Oh. But yes. That is it. That is all for today. If you would like to see any more animation cells, please feel free to ask. Because I will gladly show you because I want everybody to buy animation cells to keep 